Now, it just might be the biggest question or debate going on in the Star Wars fandom these days, even though, for all we know, it's a very definitive thing, one way or the other, behind closed doors at Lucasfilm and Disney. And that question basically is, do all roads lead to the sequel trilogy, including what Favreau, Filoni, and others are doing right now with The Mandalorian? Will we eventually see it and other shows that will be taking place in the same time period, like the upcoming Ahsoka series or Rangers of the New Republic, setting up and linking to the sequel trilogy to some degree, or not? Could it all instead maybe even lead us to a different version of the future, or a different version of the sequels? Or, on the flip side, have we maybe already seen those connections beginning? Is it obvious that this is heading towards the sequels? And there's certainly a chance that whatever Moff Gideon's plans were, and what we saw in those vats during Season 2, was connected to, or some type of precursor of, Snoke or Palpatine's return, or that the remnants of the Empire want Grogu's blood is linked to all that. Now, personally, I think Disney and or Lucasfilm will do anything and everything they can not to explicitly address this or give us any sort of concrete answer either way. I mean, they have to know this is something being talked about and discussed in the fan base, that there are even some claiming they have insider information about the undoing or retconning of the sequels, how it's all going to happen, and yet we hear nothing from them. We hear nobody in any sort of official capacity at Lucasfilm or Disney refute any of this. To which you might say, depending on what side you fall on, that it's also ridiculous that they retcon the sequels, that they don't even feel the need to address it, or you might say their silence on the matter is rather telling, because if there was no truth to any of it, or if this wasn't even a possibility on the table anywhere, why not just flat out say that the sequels, as is, are here to stay, those movies will remain a part of the official Star Wars canon, and that's it. Why not just put an end to all this once and for all, unless you were maybe considering it, or maybe already planning it. But of course, the problem with squashing these rumors once and for all, should there be no merit to them, is that as soon as they do, some fans will jump a ship immediately, which takes us full circle and back to why we're not likely going to get a straight answer about this, or why they'll continue to pretend it's a question they don't even know exists. Because no matter what course of action they've decided upon, or will decide upon, they still want to try to make everyone happy and to lose as few fans as possible. So if they are planning to keep the sequels as is, if that's set in stone already, they're going to try to make the lead up to all that as great and as enjoyable as possible, so that you don't want to jump ship when those connections finally happen. And if you're a fan of the sequels who does not want to see them retconned, they'll want to do basically the same thing. They'll want to make the lead up to the change or split in the universe so interesting and exciting that you'll be vested and will want to continue to watch anyway. In other words, I don't think their general silence on this matter means much of anything either way, and what it'll all likely come down to in the end is which way, keep or retcon or do something else clever with the sequels, whatever way they feel makes the most financial sense or what will make them the most long-term money is the route they'll take. And until it happens, don't expect to hear much on this topic again either way. However, here in a recent interview with the Writers Guild of America, and a link to the whole article will be in the description below should you want to read it yourself, Jon Favreau, the showrunner of The Mandalorian, had a few interesting things to say, albeit indirectly, about this topic, including if the Luke Skywalker appearance at the end of Season 2 was something planned all along or not. To which he said, No, the story unfolded as I wrote it. The Mandalorian inherits a great deal from existing Star Wars stories, and when I write, that context is always a consideration. It became clear that within the established continuity, certain things were likely to transpire. And as a follow-up then, he got asked if he's concerned after having placed the story right in the midst of the saga, with the latest films having revealed Skywalker's future, if he feels he's all penned in narratively. And to that, Favreau responded, We have a tremendous amount of freedom afforded to us because of the gap in time between the films. Dave Filoni and I are in constant discussion regarding how each story is impacted by and would impact existing Star Wars material. And after this interview, I've already had a few people, again on both sides of the debate, send this to me saying Favreau is confirming that they are working within the confines of the sequel trilogy, that this is proof they will not be retconned, and that The Mandalorian and all these other upcoming shows are leading or building to the sequels to give them more context, most likely. And this then is either followed up by the person contacting me by some sort of statement of doom and gloom that they can't believe they're keeping the sequels, or again, if they're on the other side, some sort of gloating that says 
see you're wrong and they're not going to undo the sequels like you predicted, even though I've never said I thought this would be a for sure thing. I've only discussed the rumors out there about them being retconned and then theorized about how it could be done and questioned if events in The Mandalorian were setting that up. And look, personally, I wouldn't exactly be against the retconning of the sequels or placing them in an alternate timeline because, no, I'm not a huge fan of them. I think episodes 7, 8, and 9 could have and should have been much, much better, a more cohesive story with better fleshed out characters, and a more satisfying ending. In fact here, I'm not even sure how many fans just love the sequels all around or as a whole that think all three of the films are great and have no sort of complaints with any of them. Because I've encountered plenty who thought, well, The Force Awakens was a great start that was then squandered with the subsequent two films, and I've encountered others who didn't like The Force Awakens, but then they loved The Last Jedi, and then they hated The Rise of Skywalker. I've even heard from people who say The Rise of Skywalker is their favorite Star Wars movie of all time ever, even though they weren't so big on the other two sequel films. But the group I rarely ever seem to hear from are those all around happy with the sequels that have no complaints about them other than maybe a few minor ones or ones that aren't what you might call deal breakers, similar to how I'm a big fan of the prequels, but I do have issues with them, but none of them are deal breakers or ruin my overall enjoyment of those films or the trilogy. Heck, there are even things in the original trilogy that could be better, but again, none of that ruins my overall enjoyment of those films. But when it comes to the sequels, I just rarely hear from people who love the whole package as is and have only minor complaints. Not saying those people don't exist, I have talked to some of them, but so often when it comes to the sequel trilogy, once someone tells me how much of a fan they are or how much they love it, they'll say something like, well, I mean, the sequels are great, but I thought the ending of The Rise of Skywalker was terrible, or something else along those lines. There's always an exception. Anyway, my point here is that I wouldn't read too much into what Favreau said, and I'm actually glad to hear just how much thought is apparently given to the rest of the canon when making this show, though yeah, it does kind of feel apparent when you're watching it, and even though he basically does admit in this interview that there isn't or hasn't been much of a game plan for this series overall, that the main goal at the start was to just get back to the basics, to more original Star Wars feeling or a way of telling a story. So if there has always been a plan in place to connect to the sequels, Seems like it's been a pretty vague one. Also in this interview, he talks about how important fan feedback is. Go figure, since fans are actually your customers. And how it's interesting to sort of get it quicker than you once could, or that it happens in real time now. That as soon as a new episode drops, you can start reading fan reaction online. And if he's genuinely doing that, and if others involved with The Mandalorian, or just in general, who work at Lucasfilm are doing that, reading or listening to what the fans have to say, I mean then they're no doubt seeing the calls from some fans to wipe away the sequels with The Mandalorian. And though, as I said, I wouldn't be upset if their silence does somehow mean they're considering it at the very least, I again think it's a question they're going to avoid answering for as long as they possibly can. And though sure, The Mandalorian may eventually have links to the sequels, I think the goal right now and for these shows on Disney+, Plus, is to sort of postpone all that and focus specifically on the time period itself, this time period that immediately follows the original trilogy, Favreau even talks about just how big of a gap they have to work in. And so I think quite clearly a new sort of Thrawn trilogy or story featuring him as the focal point or maybe as the main antagonist is being set up right now. And it won't be until after it's done that we'll either maybe see the sequel sort of worked into things or something new will take their place. As I've said before, not just in this video, quite simply no matter what the future holds for them, the sequels are going to be ignored for as long as they possibly can, or until they just can't be ignored anymore one way or the other. Well, that's all I've got for you this time. Now it's your turn to tell me what you make of Favreau's words. Do they imply something or not? Whatever you think, leave a comment below and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.